And as I said very early on, the most important thing you can do is create your own intellectual property. And the games industry have been particularly good at creating intellectual property. That's been published as games, but also leveraged through merchandising and licensing to create incremental revenues from, from other sources. And um, I'd like to talk a, a little bit now about uh, a lady I've been quite close to for the last uh, you know, 17 years or so, Laura Croft. Um, you know, you can see how she's evolved through advances in technology. And a lot of people have claimed to have created Lara Croft. It was, in fact, this, this guy, Toby Gard, who was working at our studio, Core Design, in Derby. And he'd been tasked with creating a, a new character for a game that was going to put, be put on to the launch platform when, when PlayStation was, was launched, and also Sega Saturn. And Core had or previously published a game called Rig Dangerous, which was a, a, a tomb raiding style game. Um, but Rick had a kind of certain similarity to a, a film character whose name I've forgotten. And um, it was clearly it had to do something about, um, you know, with the games industry growing up and, and respecting copyright, that uh, clearly a new character was, was required for the, for the coming consoles. So everyone thought that Toby was going to create a, another male character. But he'd seen the rise of, of girl power, um, Tank Girl, Nana Cherry. Um, and he came up with this character here, Lara Cruz. And this is the very first sketch of, of, of Lara Croft. Um, nobody really liked the name Cruz, it didn't sound particularly English, so someone went through a, a phone book and came up with the name Croft as being a quintessential English name. And here's a manga style early drawing of, of Lara until we came to the very first box cover, which we launched in November 1996. And uh, nobody knew how what an impact Lara Croft would have on the world, in the games world. And I think we probably put about 50,000 units in, in the budget and sold 7 million copies of, of, of Tomb Raider 1. So I'm going to take you on a little pictorial journey of Lara. She evolved over time from uh, PlayStation 1, when she was still being developed at Core Design. Some of the memorable and striking image of, of, of the young Lara Croft when she was still in a sort of cartoon style back in the 90s. Um, we had to move Lara's development from core design in Derby to Crystal Dynamics in California um, because core couldn't quite step up to the plate with the next generation of, of consoles. So you can see um, some of the costumes, how she evolved over time, how more graphic uh, intensity came with the current generation of consoles. The point that we've now sold 30 million copies of Tomb Raider since launch in 1996. It's generated over a billion dollars in revenue from the game itself, and another half a billion dollars from, from incremental revenues from merchandising, film, etc. And Lara Croft still remains to be one of the most famous uh, icons in, in games, and one of the most recognizable characters. You know, but not long after she came out, um, Time Digital did a survey about um, characters and uh, in uh, recognition terms, she scored higher than the Pope. Um, so that says something about it. So she became a sort of pop culture phenomenon. She moved out of, of, of the games world into mass market entertainment, uh, graced the covers of lifestyle magazines as well as games magazines, um, was parodied, but she's a big enough franchise to you know, be parody being good rather than bad. Uh, survived notoriety, the famous nude raider shots from Nell Macandro in Playboy. And of course, we realized we needed a, a real Lara person to play Lara as well. So um, <clears throat> this is our first trade show back in, uh, in, in 1996. And for some reason, we decided to have three Lara Crofts rather than one. Um, the first girl at the far end, um, Natalie Cook, she became Lara Croft for the first year following this two-day trade show. The girl at this end, no idea what happened to her. The girl in the middle went on to have quite an infamous or famous career, depending where you come from. Anyone like to guess who that is? Correct. Ten points in the front row. It was, in fact, Jordan. She was a young Katie Price, age 18, came bouncing into, the, into our studios. We, we just had to give her that job, and uh, she went off to become Jordan. But she was Laura Croft for a weekend. And so then we had Natalie Cook for the first year. Then we had... Um, uh, 
who did we have there? Rona Mitra, who went on to become a very famous Hollywood actress. And here's another lesson in life. Do what you're good at. You know, we make games. We do not make records. But at that time, we thought we could do everything. And uh, so we recorded an album. Uh, we got uh, Dave Stewart from the Eurythmics to write a, a Tomb Raider album. Uh, Rona was going to sing it. He decided he had to go off to, um, down the Amazon, you know, with Rona for a couple of weeks to get into that whole Tomb Raider thing. And uh, came back and... Um, we played it and thought, hmm, not sure about this. So we do some test marketing in France, so uh, it didn't do too well, so we kind of quietly forgot about it. But, you know, so lesson number three is do what you're good at uh, and stick to that. Don't do what you're bad at. But, you know, we've got no, no, no secrets here, so I'm going to play you the Tomb Raider song now. Uh, there's plenty of room. If you feel compelled, you need to dance. There's plenty of guys and girls. You go ahead. I'm sure you're going to really enjoy this. It's uh, a milestone, milestone in music history. Nell McAndrew uh, became a darling of tabloids and, uh, and of, the, of, of television. Uh, Lara Weller became a famous uh, model in, in Holland. Uh, Lucy Clarkson became a model in, in the north of England. Gilles de Jong became a famous catwalk model in New York. Karina uh, Madaby, uh, aspiring actress. She was probably my favorite. I suppose, I'm not supposed to say I'm favorite, but she was, she was a fantastic character as well. Uh, and Alison Carroll, who's the last of the, of the Laras in, in real life. Here's Old Bloat with Lara Croft. Old Bloat with three Lara Crofts. Uh, old Bloat with lots of Lara Crofts reunion party. But the important thing is every time there was a new Lara Croft, it generated you know, lots and lots of, of, uh, of, of, of interest in the media. Uh, everyone wants want to know a little piece of, of Lara. Um, some funny stories at the time, anecdotes. Uh, David James, who was the Liverpool and England goalkeeper at the time, led in four really shocking goals. And the whole back page of the Times was devoted to him saying that the reason he'd been played so badly, he'd spent the whole night playing Tomb Raider. Um, Prodigy were a year late d delivering an album, said so they spent the whole year playing uh, Tomb Raider. And just again, getting power, the, talking about intellectual property, the power of the brand is so important because all these companies, obviously well-known, established in their own right, all wanted to use Laura Croft to help promote um, their, their offering. <coughs> Which was good for two reasons. One, they gave us money, and, and two, they were promoting Laura Croft at the same time as they're promoting their own, their own products. Um, one of the first was LucasAid. Uh, who had a really spike in, in, in sales as a, resu a result of using Lara. They did it for three um, seasons and even changed the name from Lucas Aid to Lara's Aid for a period of three months. And um, again, some of the you know, sort of complementary industries around games, you know, c cinema, CGI, and of course advertising. So you know, there's, there's, there's crossover between our industry and all the other creative industries. So I'm going to show you some of the ads because they're socially relevant and also quite funny.
and then they did a, a hybrid. Action. <laughs> Oh, Lucasade. Thanks, Lobby. Oh. Spartacus, Boris. I'll keep you, woof, woof. And then French got involved. Selection. Cordo Bavario. And even the mighty visa in parts of Asia. she didn't get unnoticed by Hollywood. Now, traditionally, Hollywood had created their own characters, looked at literature, comics, and now they're looking at games IP, because they'd seen how much greater engagement games were having with people than just traditional linear entertainment. Um, I remember, with uh, fond memories, when we were licensing the, the film to, to Paramount uh, via their production company, Larry Borden Associates, and we managed to get a, a veto over the script and over the cast. And when they said they'd like Angelina Jolie to play the role of Lara Croft, we said, that's absolutely fine, you go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah, I met her a couple of times on, on the set at Pinewood. I'm still recovering from that. So uh, <laughs> the f anyway, the film generated $450 million at box office and another $100 million in DVD and video sales. Um, there's been theme park rides like this. You wouldn't catch me on any of these, but they've been very popular in America. There's even a, a Lara Croft way in, in Derby, um, where that, the home of, the, of where Lara was uh, born, so to speak. And there's been merchandise, so all these incremental revenues you get. But of course, we didn't want to uh, oversaturate the market. Uh, we wanted to make sure the integrity was, was maintained. So we only released one or two items, very select items. So, uh, <laughs> so didn't want to uh, make anyone thinking that we were kind of exploiting the brand in any way. <laughs> um, so there from that sketch, you create a character, you create an intellectual property, you create a brand, a franchise, and then you can license it. So it's all through retaining ownership. 
you know, if you created a character for somebody else and given it to somebody else, they might do equally the same with your IP. So if you can, hang on to it. It's very valuable. So there's a new Tomb Raider out, um, launched last week, some of you may be aware. This is a, a prequel rather than a sequel. This is a, an origin story about how Lara Croft became a, a Tomb Raider. And um, it was decided that um, it would be a, uh, a reboot of the franchise in the way that um, Batman and, and James Bond had, had done so well recently with, with reboots of their franchise. And at the same time, a lot of people were asking us about the, the young Lara Croft. How did she become a Tomb Raider in the first place? And um, we, um, of course, the game is developed by Crystal Dynamics in, in California. Uh, they have full um, creative control and autonomy, and I think they did an incredible job. This is a voyage of discovery for the young Lara Croft. She gets shipwrecked on this very uh, inhospitable island, uh, very hostile environment, and uh, has to survive. So it's about survival, action, and adventure, but it still keeps the three core pillars of, of the Tomb Raider franchise in, in exploration, adventure, uh, puzzle solving, albeit environmental puzzles this time, and combat. And uh, so here's, here's Lara. She's no longer armor-plated and, and Teflon-coated. She does sustain damage. I say it's the, the origin story. Um, we probably haven't got enough time now to show you any footage. Um, just to say that the game was launched last week. So back to the starting point here. You know, we are a very creative nation. And um, I feel very passionate about the creative industries. And um, I think we need to invest in the games industry and other creative industries in, in several ways. Um, raise the profile, the perception. Make sure there's super fast broadband so we can... Uh, serve our content to global audiences. By the first, third P here, properties, the, I was just talking about intellectual property, how you retain ownership of it after creating it. Uh, pounds, I mean access to finance, make sure that um, we're able to fund our, our young creatives um, because they're no more risky than any other business, I would say. And of course, we have to have the right people working in, in the creative industries that, with the right skills.